So, hey, you guys, I'm sure by time now you've heard, because uh, this is four days in the running now, this has been in the news cycle, uh, that Denise Prudhomme had passed away on August 20th in a Wells Fargo corporate office. OK, so apparently what happened was uh, this was in Tempe, Arizona, says that uh, per Yahoo News, it says that a Wells Fargo employee in Arizona was found dead in her cubicle four days after she clocked into work on Friday, August 16th, 7 a.m. Normal time, people go to work, you know, maybe a little bit early, but um, she she clocked in at seven and uh, Denise is 60. She arrived at the company's office uh, near Priest Drive and Washington Street in Tempe, Arizona. And uh, police said basically that, you know, when they arrived at the scene, that didn't look like there was any foul play of any sort. Um, of course, they did confirm, uh, Wells Fargo did confirm that she did clock in. Um, uh, on August 16th at 7 a.m. because they have a badge access. So they knew when she was there. And apparently this office was uh, a mixed office in terms of you had people that were working on site and people that will work from home. And anybody that has ever worked from home knows that you can, you know, go in the office sometimes there's certain things you want to handle, or maybe there's a colleague that you want to talk to face to face, you know, you need to hash something out. Uh, in terms of, you know, work activity. Um, but this office space was on the third floor of the office. The curious thing is though, uh, really, really, you got to look at when I worked, I worked in a, a corporate office and I wasn't always in the office. So I kind of understand that I, I worked in the field. So I know though, one thing for sure is that every night there was a cleaning crew that came in. So right around, because sometimes I would go in the office late to pick up something or print up, you know, I've had to print up a lot of stuff. Um, I would go ahead and go in the office and you would see the cleaning crew in there roughly around six to seven. That's a lot of the times when the uh, cleaning crew goes in for these corporate spaces and they usually clean this every single night. So the fact that she was in there and we know they have cleaning crews, the fact that no one found her body for four days that's kind of sus. Like it makes you wonder like how often do they send a cleaning crew in there? Or maybe they only have it once a week or something like that. Since there's not that many people in there, there's not a lot of traffic in terms of uh, workers being there consistently, but it's just, it's just kind of weird, right? Because in the past um, on top of working as a stock worker before in my early twenties, I worked as a uh, security agent. So when you do a security agent, you walk through the office, you know, you go through, there's little things where you hit on the side where it shows that you actually walk through and it's a sensor that lets them know that you actually walk through and you tag that area that you went through. So there was no security that detected her. There was no cleaning crew that detected her. There were no employees that detected her. So all of that kind of sounds a little funny. Maybe, you know, some of the news Later on comes out, um, we know Wells Fargo has not been in the press in a good light lately. You know, over the last, I want to say about four years, they've consistently been in lawsuits from, uh, excuse me, from fake accounts, right? Because we know they've had fake accounts that they uh, start up for people. Um, they've overcharged people for accounts. I mean, just a slew of things that, you know, Wells Fargo has been in the business cycle or the business news cycle negatively for the last, you know, like I said, about four years. So this is just another black eye hit to Wells Fargo and what they've been doing. Um, this could have happened to any company. It just happened to be Wells Fargo. And, uh, you know, condolences definitely go out to uh, Denise's family um, because nobody could, you know, probably foresee something like this. Uh, doesn't report that she had any specific health conditions. So if you know, it bodes to say that that's why it's so important. That's why, you know, I still uh, am a huge proponent, obviously, because I'm in the industry. But even if I wasn't in the industry, having life insurance is very, very important. And this is one of those perfect examples. Who would have known, you know, who would have known that Denise checked in that day and she was going to be, you know, gone that day? Like, no, nobody could have foretold that. She couldn't have foretold that. And that's what life insurance is really for, is for those unexpected time periods. Like we all know we're going to go, right? We all came in with a birth certificate and a birth date. And we know when we came in, but we did not come in with an expiration tag, right? So we don't know when we're going to go. So it's that's why it's so important, you know, when you look at having life insurance is because you just don't know. So 
again, condolences go out to the family and hopefully that, you know, they kind of figure out like what really happened. Um, obviously she was six years old, you know, there wasn't any, re any reports that she was on medication, but obviously out of respect and privacy for the family, um, you know, there's going to be, uh, certain details that maybe we just, we don't know, you know, find out publicly, but, um, hopefully, you know, you guys take this as an example, uh, and a glaring reason why you should have insurance, life insurance, why it's so important. Doesn't matter where there's term or permanent. I know there's like a war out here when it comes to life insurance and, oh, you should have permanent insurance. Oh, you should have term insurance. Just have some coverage. You know, even if it's through your job, a lot of times through your job is not portable. So portable just meaning like you can't take it with you. Once you leave that job, you don't, you don't have any more coverage. So that's why it's important to have your own standalone policy that you have and you own. And hopefully you own it through a structure of a trust. Uh, because I have some other videos that I'm be uploading pretty soon explaining why it's so important to have that life insurance owned by the trust. At minimal, have the trust be the beneficiary so that you can decide who gets that money and how they get to spend it and when they get to spend it. And do me a favor, hit that uh, subscribe button, hit the like if you like the video, hit a dislike if you dislike the video. Um, but, you know, this is a, the typical news that I uh, would like to report on, but I figured this would be a great use case scenario to kind of show an example of why it's so important to have life insurance and how it can play a critical part in your family and preserving their wealth. So hope you guys have a great day and see you on the next one.